Jesus. Your presence is heaven to me. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you and we bless you, give you the praise. We give you all the adoration, Lord. For you are worthy to be praised this morning. Thank you for your presence that have laid out this morning through the liberation hour and also the praise and worship. We thank you for the same presence, the Holy Spirit, to also lead me to put the words in my mouth that I declare the oracle of God. I will not speak on my own Holy Spirit. Commit the hearts of your people, those at home, those are here into your hand, that you yourself will minister to them. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for you, our helper. You are everything. And I thank you for using me this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Clap your hand for Jesus. That his presence is heaven. We thank God this morning. Another day that the Lord has made. And we'll rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. We thank you. I'm going to talk to you about what is the reason, your reason of serving God. What reason? Everybody have a reason that they serve him. Amen. Praise the Lord. Some their reason is whatever they are looking for. Some also, they have a reason because they truly want to say so. As the Lord was ministered to us this morning, I want you to take a second and ponder over it. What is my reason? If your reason is not tangible or is not right, that means that you will not be able to stand. Praise the Lord. You won't be able to stand. Because it says, seek ye the kingdom of God. So your focus is, what is our reason? What's my reason? That I'm serving him. Amen. So turn with me to the book of Job. The book of Job, chapter 1. Amen. And all of us, we know our adversaries. The adversaries will take you. He will, he will just come and challenge and to see your reason of serving him. Praise the Lord. The adversary that keeps of the brethren. Amen. One, he said, there was a man in the land of Zoo whose name was Job. And that man was blameless and upright. And one who feared God and shunned evil. And seven sons and seven sons and three daughters were born to him. Also, his possession were seven thousand sheep, three thousand camels, five hundred yokes of oxen, and five hundred female donkeys, and a very large household. So that this man was the greatest of all the people of the east. Is the greatest of all the people of the east, and this and his sons will go and feast in their house in their houses, each on his appointed day, and will send and invite their three sisters, three sisters to eat and drink with them. So it was when the days of feasting had run their course. That Job would send and sanctify them. And he will r rise early in the morning and offer burnt offering according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned and, cu and, cu and curse God in their heart that, that Job did regularly. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before God, before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. Praise the Lord. And the Lord said to Satan, Where from where do you come from? For where from where do you come? So Satan answered the Lord and said from going to and fro on the earth and from walking back and forth on it then the lord said the lord said to satan have you considered my servant job that there is none like him on the earth a blameless upright 
one who fear God and shun evil. So Satan answered. So Satan answered. Satan answered. Answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for nothing? Have you not made a herd urge around him, around his household, and around all that he has, all that he has on every side? Have you, you have blessed the work of his hands, and this and his possession have increased in the land. But now stretch out your hand and touch all that he has, and he will surely curse you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he ha all that he has is in your power. Only do not lay a hand. Don't lay a hand on his person. So Satan went from the presence of the Lord. Remember, I want us to go to, also let me give you another scripture for us to understand. Psalm 82, verse 1. It says, God presided over heaven's courts. Remember, Satan appeared into the heaven's courts. But I want you to understand. Somebody will ask, would he do heaven have courts? Yes, heaven have courts. Praise the Lord. So over heaven's court. This is Psalm 82, 1. And he promised to eight. I might not go through order, but I just want you to get something. And he pronounced judgment on heavenly, on heavenly beings. How long would you... Hand down on just decision by favoring the wicked. Interclude and give justice to the poor and end the orphans. Uphold the right of the oppressed and the des destitute. Just for you to know, heaven have a court that always God sits on his throne and makes judgment. The Bible says one of the days... That God sat on the throne, Satan appeared. You should know that Satan have access to his presence. There's a certain place that Satan have access that he goes. He goes and represents and, and show God and also accuse God because he goes uh, flow and through, walk back and forth. And he says in his wedding job, He's watching everything that any of us are doing. So when we make mistake and do and break God's law, he presents it before him. So he will not come to you to try to fight it when he don't have anything in your life. Nothing in your life that you have done. Praise the Lord. He have no right to come unless he have a cause. The cause is what you have done. He said he walked back and forth. And the Lord said, oh, have you considered Job? Does Job serve you for nothing? Is he serving you? Is he not serving you because you have really? That is why I titled, what is your reason of serving God? What is your reason? Am I serving him because I'm going through? Praise the Lord. Whatever that I went through, it was what brought me to him. Let me tell you, whatever you go through, whatsoever you face, it could be sickness, whatsoever, whatsoever that. So if you don't seek he the kingdom of God and, and all his righteousness and decide and make a decision to stand and to serve him and make him your God. It's like a parent and children. Do you love your parent because of things they buy for you? Or do you love them because you genuinely love them? Because this is my mother and this is my father. The same way with God. Am I serving him because of what he provides for me? Or I'm serving him because he's my God. God knows it when you truly, genuinely seek him. You're not serving him because he wants to work on your marriage. You want him to fix your marriage. You want him to do what? To heal you. You want him to give you a man. He want you, you want him to give you a woman. He wants you to help your career. The moment, if all that is what you are serving God or go to church, trust me, a time will come, you will not be able to stand. You cannot stand because it will be too much for you. 
But when you love him with all your heart and you fear him, just like the way the Bible said, have you considered Job? A man, he said the whole East, that said the whole North America, it's only him alone that fear God, that love him with all his heart. I'm not serving you because you bless me. I'm not serving you because you gave me a good job. I'm not serving you because financially I'm able to pay everything. I'm serving you because I know you are my maker. I know you made me. If you, whether you provide or you don't provide. Whether you heal me or you don't heal me. I came to a place. I said, whether you bring my husband home or not. When I, when I got that understanding. I said, I will serve you. So you fall in love with God. Let me tell you, regardless of whatever. He said, I'm walking back and forth. Satan walk back and forth. You think that whatever you do, he doesn't see you. He sees you. He sent demons to follow you. They report to him. Just like angels report to God. He said, I walk back and forth. And I see. And I see everything that's going on. God has given him access. He has given him permission. He created him. His job is to do what? To cause havoc. His job is to destroy you. And God's job. He said, the plan I have for you is of good but not evil. It's a plan that will bring you to expected end. God wake up every morning. When he wake up in the morning, he think good of you. That is why you as a child of God, you have to do what? You have to uh, program yourself to be thinking good of yourself. Do not allow whatever you're going through to do what? To, to, to lead you and focus on the Know the power of God and know who your God is. If you know who your God is, Adam will say, remember the day Shanti, he said, why are you it's like why are you like which 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 why don't you focus on my power and know that I have more power than witchcraft I created that which when I decide to crush I will crush that crushing depends on only God when God decides to heal you he will heal you as long as you have not healed me I will praise him I, I will give something to the devil to go and report to him he said, have you blessed Job for nothing? The, see, the devil knows that Job loved God, but he still wants permission. Ah, The Lord said, I have not given you to anyone to destroy you. I have not given to anyone. They know that they have no power to destroy you. They can work against you for a limit place and a limit time. Ah. I want you to, to lift up your right hand like this. Tap your shoulder that God loves me. What is it? That is what Paul said. Is it farming? Is it nakedness? Is it challenge? What is it that you will go through? You have to make sure. Check your reason of you serving him. Check your reason. Is it your reason of because he has blessed you? Is it your reason? Because I'm praying for God to break me through the moment he break me through. Adam will say. Let that reason be because I love you. Hey, I cannot do without you. If it wasn't for you, I would not know what i have been. My enemies have like, destroyed me. But you have been there. You have been a constant friend. When everything go against you, he is still there. Don't ever think of whatever you are going through that you are alone. Let me tell you. They are forces. They are beings. Let me tell you. In the heaven's court, he judges the angels. And he, they ask God, when are you going to discern? When are you going to judge the wicked? There is, there is court in heaven. And everything that goes on every day. Satan was, he was there. He has, uh, he has certain access before him. He said, go ahead. But one thing I can tell you, oh Satan, 
You cannot touch him. But you can touch his possession. <laughs> but you can't. His being, his soul. You can't kill him. That you are a mercy. As far. You see, the, the Lord give the enemy access. He give the enemy access. He give certain people access. The enemy access. The enemy also give it to his followers. I go do this. Do that. Do that. Go do that. Go afflict. Afflict the marriage. Do this. But you see, he will not also bring upon you what you can never carry. You have been made in his image. And you don't know that you carry the DNA of God if you love God. You carry the blood of Jesus has redeemed you. It is already in you. You never know. You will never know until you go through challenges that you'll be able to stand. Tell your neighbor, I can stand this heat. Say, I am standing the heat. And the heat will subside. It will subside. It will come down. Because it will not bring upon you what you cannot bear. He said, let me. He said, go ahead. See, when Satan gets a chance, Aram will see. Some people, the enemy don't get the chance like that over certain people. So the time they get it and the door is open, ah, within an hour, he destroy it. Within an hour. Because he, he wants to come against you so much that you will give up. But God knows that what is in you is greater than what is in the world. What God has put inside us, nobody has power to destroy you or to take what belongs to you unless God has permitted them. And if God permitted, there's something he's teaching and training you for, for what is ahead. What is your reason of serving him? Don't let your reason of serving him be the reason of the material things and everything. Let your reason not because he give you marriage, because he give you money, he give you all this material thing. Let me say all these things, you can lose it a twinkle of an eye. But when you have God and your reason is loving him, the Lord, I love you with all my heart, all my soul. You fear him, everything you lose. Let me tell you, within a twinkle of an eye, he can also let you get it back and even get it double. Say, does he serve you for nothing? We are afraid. We are worried of things that are going on. You have no idea that God is in charge and is in control. You don't know that when he say like this, with his finger, that he tap it like this, things turn around for his glory in our life. He said, go ahead. Sit and destroy everything that Job has, including his children, all of them die. Not only that was not enough for Satan. He had to go back to the courtroom and bring the case again. Bring the file and put it before God. He said, what is it again? He said, it's because you have left his body. You have a nice body. You understand? You rub nice moisturizer and your skin is looking good. He said, touch the skin and let's see. Ah. Who is this God? Who is this God that we are serving? Who is this God that I serve? <laughs> when the enemy think that he have finished with you and destroy you, you, he don't know that God is starting a new thing. God is starting a new thing in your life. And it will spring forth. And all eyes will see. Oh, I want you to take your finger and touch your, your heart. Do like this. And look at me. Say, I will not die. Whatever they plan, it will never come to pass. Whatever I'm going through, because God sees I can handle it. He knows I can bear it. It is for his glory. And it is for my promotion. And it's for my elevation. Say, I will not die. He said, my heart will not fail me. The devil is a liar. I don't know what is going on, but I trust my God. 
I don't serve God for any reason. I serve him because he loves me and I love him and he is my creator. I will not put God aside. Neither will I put God down. Oh, I will not put God down. So God, help me. Help me, oh God. The challenge that going on, the trials that I'm going through, the enemy have destiny. That will put you down. But God, I will not put you down. Thank you for letting me know. But help me, oh God. Help me to be faithful. Say, help me to be faithful. Help me to be honest in your vineyard. When you are calling your people, when you are calling your children, that Lord God, you will call my name. Because you see everything that I'm going through. I am not compromising. I am not putting you down. I'm not joining anybody to say you cannot do it. I know without a shadow of a doubt, with your word, oh God, you have let me understand that you are with me. Lord, I thank you and I bless you. My reason for serving you, my reasons for following you thank you lord thank you holy god you know what he's saying he says it's a journey there are some places it's like going with people sometimes some friends you have to cut them off for you to make it in some people you have to cut them off you have to remove them from the equation for you to reach up to him if not uh, you'll be a koro massacre you'll be distracted because you are listening here and listening here and listen there and listen there. Right now we are in a place uh, of a journey of all alone. When he brings you to that expected end, he himself will cause whosoever that need to be there need to be in. It is not you that you have to choose and pick her in the name of Jesus. So don't worry by the terror by night and the arrows. You can imagine what Job was thinking. I did not do anything wrong. I did not sin against my God. I have been faithful in all my ways I've tried. I don't know, but God, I trust you and I give you the praise. My reason of serving you is not because you have blessed me. It's not because you have given me everything. It's not because you have allowed me oh God to be able to be in a place oh father God that you want me it's not because you have given and entrusted some things in my hand it's because I love you when I found out that you created me you are my maker Lord I can go back I can go back to the childhood how you have been there for me how you have protected me how you have been behind the scene you have been there God you have been there nobody has been there but you alone you have let me know. You have allowed me to know that hey, you, didn't, you don't need nobody but me alone. Because you are jealous of me. You are jealous of me. Why? So why do you need approval of men, approval of people? People that I created is that one that you need approval from? You don't need approval of men. You need approval of God. If God decides, I don't know what is going on with you or with your life or with your health. But God said, I am the God that healed I am the God. He said, one of these days you will wake up and you're going to see. Whatever that is going on with your life, whether sickness or disease, I will heal you and I will take you out of it. And you will know that indeed that I am God. That will give you more reason uh, that you will serve me with all your soul, with all your heart. I want you to know I am the God that healed. I am a God of healing, a healing God. I am not a God that they will pretend and pay people to come on the stage and show up that you have healed them, but yet it's all cahoots. They want people to know because they want name for themselves. I'm not gathering for that. My power is still in existence. You say, my people leave. They just be led to go of what they want to see, the glam and everything, but they have forgotten. A A lot of you don't know. I'm also judging churches. I will judge church accordingly. You have no idea. Some are running to a church that I'm not there. They're running to places that I'm not there. 
Because they want to see the name and the fame and the glam and everything. And how church look and all that. And the choir, how they sing. But all of them stand, standing at the pulpit, fornicating and doing all kinds of stuff. Because my people, many don't have the spirit of God in them for them to know where to go and where not to go. They refuse and they don't want to rebuke from the pulpit. They, want, they don't want rebuke that you talk to them and you rebuke them right in their face. They don't want, they want the pastor, the man of God to just pacify them and, and just clap back their hair. And so you are doing what more. Why the pastor know what you are doing? It's wrong. I will not push you to the wall. If I see, you cannot survive. I will not push you to the wall. That means I will not let you go through. Yekiyandara. Have you forgotten? Have you known? Have you seen my power? Ekoro Master. You say, have you seen my power? Just wait and see. One of the days that you go back to work. You go back to work. The same people that wanted to fire you. The same people that want to. Now they will put you. And they will make you a leader over it. And want to tell you that we want you to be part of our leaders. We don't know. But there's something in you that we need. That we want. You have no idea the plan. It's I orchestrated. I allow all this thing to go on. So you can rise and pray for you to know that I am God. Do Job serve you for nothing? They go ahead. I can imagine the devil after doing all that, putting the hand in the mouth and watching. That is why the enemy will put the mouth in the mouth because the things that they have been doing that is not working. Who can take what belongs to you? Who can take them out of your hand? You don't know that I am judging them because God is a judge and He sits on the throne. And every petition we bring to the heavens call. That means that when we pray, Allah. But no, our last chatting, we're praying. We brought some things before him. And we pray. And God said, thank you for bringing it before me. And to pray for her. For everything you guys have said, I've heard it. And I will move accordingly. And exactly couple of whatever, God move. But good things are coming again. Great things are coming to you. You have no idea. Elevation promotion. Every single one of them in that place, in that hospital, every single one of them, God said, I will sit them down. Let me tell you. When the enemy rise against you and want to touch you, you have provoked God. Some, he will sit them. Some, he will cause blindness. Watch it and write it down. They will not understand because God is a judge and he's sitting on his throne. And if he let that happen, it's because he's trying to train me. He's trying to humble me. He's trying to do something new in my life, in your life. Why are you crying? He said, rise up, get up from there. Take handkerchief and cleanse your tears. Don't you know you have someone in heaven that bigger than anything? You have, you have limited me because you don't know who I am. If only you know who God is in your life. And Satan is say, does he serve you for nothing? Say, so go ahead. Isn't that all what you are capable of doing? Accusing people? Were you not in heaven with me and I threw you down? Go ahead. You are jealous because you couldn't love me. You couldn't love me. And Job loved me. Do you know that? Satan is so jealous when people, when souls, when human beings genuinely love God. He wish he could trade place, but his faith is already settled by God. He cannot change. He has already been condemned. You and I are not condemned. As long as we are still in this body, our soul, our spirit is in us, and we are still alive, is the time that we make amends with God and genuinely know what we are. What, how are we serving him? Why are we serving him? Are we serving him because of what we can get? There's a time and season for prayer. There's a time you pray, 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 pray. 
Just like right now, we're in the area of prayer. And the season comes and God gives you rest. He gives you rest. There's a time he let you fight battles. And after a time you fight battles, say no. There's a time. Let me tell you, we are in a season and we are in a time. That things are about to change, about to turn around. All eyes will see. And let me tell you, the enemy cannot stop it. Witches cannot stop it. They cannot divert it. Could there be anyone try to do it? Because this thing here must take place. And this thing must happen. You cannot close what God has opened. You cannot shut what the hand of God. Let me tell you, one hand is here and one hand is there. And they are holding it open. You cannot. Hear me and look into my eyes. You've done your part and God is about to do his own. He gave you time to change and to turn your life around because you don't know what is coming upon you the whole entire because even when Satan did it he thought he had won at the end every word that you have spoken will come to pass your husband will come home your marriage will be fulfilled it will gather and the pieces wherever they place it and they put it God will send his angel. They are locating every piece. It's like a vase. And he will put it together. Hey, who can destroy any home that I, God, Adam will say, have taken my time to build? Scatter it. I will shame you by locating it. He said, am I not God? I am the same God that deliver. I choose whom to deliver. And I choose whom not to deliver. I want you to take your hand. He said, I've called you home. If I, when God said, I've called you, that means that I've called you to be the fam, to be part of the family of Christian. I've called you. There are so many souls. Is everybody that God has called? Ah, you wake up in the morning. Unless your heart genuinely is not repented. But he called you home. You wake up in the morning and you thank him. Let me tell you. The world is not going to be the same. The world is going. And as I see all the time like a wind, some are holding like a tree holding, and the wind is blowing. God say, I gave you time to change, and you chose not to change. Can you stand of what is coming? You can sit in your home and say all kinds of stuff, thinking it's a lie. But when it manifests and it takes place, you remember this woman talked about it. And the Lord is announcing and sound, sounding the alarm all over. He's giving to his people, prophets, preachers, and everything to talk about. The world is not going to be the same. So you have to know where you stand. What is your reason of serving God? Some go to church just to go and destroy. Some go to the house of God just to pretend and God said, let me say, you, can, you cannot continue to pretend. And some go to church and they hoover, they, they cover like this the church. And everyone that they go, watch and see, you will scatter many churches. Some he will remove out and some he will add. He's cleaning and cleansing the church and he's cutting and separating the chaff from the grain. Just as he was doing here, he would do all over. God said that even if you are able to walk in, don't go to church and don't go, don't go to church and don't don't go to man thinking it's man that will save you. Don't follow friends and think because many of your friends are heading towards destruction. They have already been destroyed, condemned, but yet they don't know. Job stood the test of time. It was difficult. That's why Paul says, is it famine? Is it nakedness? What is it that can make us stay away from God? Tell your neighbor, whatever you are going through, you need to just bless the name of the Lord. Do not hate those that are fighting against you. Just love them and pray for them. They are doing you good. Whoever trying to fight and prevent you not to get what belongs to you, you better thank God for their life. 
They are rather blessing you. They are helping you to get to a place in him. If it wasn't for whatsoever, trust me, you continue to be lingering around. But right now, some of you are chewing bones. Some of you understand. You come to a place of understanding. Nothing touches you that will hurt you. No wind that can blow you out. They have done you well. Say, my enemies have done me well. I will forever love you. In the name of Jesus. Say, I pray for you. Oh, I don't hate you. You think I do. But there is no hatred in me. Everything that is in me is love. And God, I give you the praise. I give you the adoration. The, what did God do after, after Satan doing all these things? He brought Job down. He hit that man. He hit him so much. And after showing up in the heavens court, he said, no, I brought another petition. I brought another. I want you to, I want you to judge it for me. I want you to do it. So what is that? He said, oh, because he has his flesh on him. His skin look good. He, he rubbed moisturizer. Don't you see his face and everything? Don't you see the makeups and don't you see his skin and everything? He's able to show and wear shut and open. Don't you see his six pack and all that? He's able to go to the gym. He's able to do that. But touch his flesh. I said, go ahead. The only thing that his life, I have not given his life, his breath, I have not given it to you. Go ahead and do whatever. But one thing that you cannot kill him. Tell your neighbor, we will not die. Say, I will not die. But I will definitely fulfill the purpose of God. The plan of God for my life, regardless of the wind where is throwing me, regardless of the wind where is blowing, I will definitely fulfill. Because I'm like the tree that planted by waters uh, that can never be removed or moved in the name of Jesus. He that lives in me is greater. I'm not serving God because of what I can get. Because of me being able to pay my bill. No, I am serving him because I fear him. I am serving him because I love him. I am serving him because he's my creator. I am serving him. Ah. Because he knows from the end to the beginning, beginning to the end. He knows everything. Nothing surprised me. And nothing, nothing surprised him. Satan went ahead. When Satan gets a chance from God. To afflict you. When Satan gets permission. I just show you. He go to court. His followers cannot lift up a finger. Until they get permission. From Satan. From their master. He say hey this one there. Don't go there. And if they don't listen. And they go. The consequence. They will bear it. Because Satan being in heaven with God. So he knows. When God say no, he means no. He touches. He let boil. Boil come. I want you to think and imagine you. Within a day. Within an hour. You lose your job. You lose children. You lose your home. You lose everything. Somebody will say, ah, you're a Christian. You are, why are you losing? Why are you going through? Why? My dear. It's Christians are the one. That go through the most. Don't be envious of anyone. Let me tell you. Blessings. eh? Blessings. As God can bless. Satan also can give people things. He can give you people. He can give them things. But their soul. Is already being condemned. Unless they repent. So do not be envious of any wicked. Don't be envious of anyone. Don't look at somebody's life and you want your life to be like that. Don't look at somebody's marriage and you think that my dear, they're not telling you what is inside. Don't look at someone's life and think that, oh, I want my life to be. No, I am content of where I am in Christ Jesus. I am blessed. 
I don't need certain things for me. As long as I wake up in the morning and I have breath in me and I give him the praise and I thank him that he has blessed me. Learn to know that and learn to let that be your destiny. You wake up, your feet touch the ground. Bless the name of the Lord. You did not get up. You don't just get up to wake up by yourself. It's the spirit of God that wake you up. Many of us don't know. We feel so entitled. So entitled. We feel so entitled. God has been there all this while. Job flesh deteriorated. He had boiled all over him. Imagine people that knows him, know him as a great man, know him as the richest man, know him as a faithful man. Now they see this same man sitting on the roadside, sitting there. I believe many will say, where is your God? Where is your God? Where is this God that you serve? Oh, my God is still on the throne. He's still on the throne. He told his wife. When the wife said, I curse this God and leave. He said, must I only accept only good things? I will accept good things. And I will accept also bad things. Whatever that comes in my way, I will accept it and bless the name of the Lord. God is in charge and he's in control. What is your reason of serving him? Is your reason of serving him for him to heal you? And when he healed you, if you have a reason, and the reason is all these immaterial things and all that, after everything, he do it for you. That is why the Lord sometimes allow us, you see one situation, you'll be in it for a long time. It's because he wants your heart. He wants the heart to turn to him. He wants the heart to be given to him. Oh, he loved me. Because he gave you a marriage. He gave you this. I hear people, they're talking about God. They're talking about God. They're talking about God. But yet, they don't even know God. I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. A little thing, something happened to you and then that's it. You run away. You run away. Somebody comes to you. I know somewhere. Let me take you. You just run. Instead of you standing on your two feet and be praying. And take your petition before the heaven's court. The just judge that, that, that is not partial. That judge accordingly. He will not say because you are bishop. So let me just. Because you are an apostle. Because you are a prophet. So let me be on your side. No. He sees everything. He you know you're going out and coming in. You know which heart that love him. And which heart. That's why he told the children of Israel. The children of Israel, the Lord did so many things for them. The moment they get freedom, they turn against him. Why do you think God has to reach out to the Gentiles, you and I, to adopt us to be part of their destiny? Because those that, as he chose Abraham to start a new thing and everything, the people, the descendants of Abraham, the Jews, they love God of what he can do for them. But they don't love him and everything. They don't love him. Their heart is so far away from him. They come to him when they see their enemies are after them. Then they come to God and cry. And even when they cry, it's the only few that cry to God. And God look at the few and reach out to all of them and deliver them. Don't let our story be like that. What is your reason of serving him? Is your reason of serving him because what? You want a child? Because you want God to reconcile whatsoever your career or money or whatsoever that it is. Let your reason that you seek him first. You put him first. Everything about him. To be able to get to a place, God, if you take away my career, if you take away this, if you take away, I will still love you. You see, when it comes to that place, God will say, have you considered my servant have you considered my daughter? Have you considered my son? Have you considered he doesn't love me or she doesn't love me because of the things I'm doing? Ah. So if you don't serve me, I will raise the stone to do what? To serve me. What is your reason of serving him? Don't let the petition that we bring before him make, because he knows our heart. He knows. 
knows whether you love him or not. He knows that when he breaks you through, he will not. You understand? You will put him on the back. Earlier on, you, hear what, you heard what God said. He said the challenges and the trials and the attack upon your life is because the enemy wants you to do it, to put God down. But glory be to God. In my language, see, whom he has seen, he has seen me long time. He has seen me long time before he called. He knows your capability. Adam will say, you have to love him with your heart that nothing can separate you. Everybody can desert you. But you have this friendship with him. You have this relationship with him that nothing can separate you. Until you get to that place of him. Lonely that you are so alone. You and him and everything. Sometimes he can allow everything to fail you. Everything to fail and desert you. Because he wants you to himself. To build you. And when he's through. All that you need. He will also supply. Supply. As the world. As the journey that we are going. Is not getting this and that. We're going to see as we are going. Year after year. You're going to see how America will be. Where they will stand. Where the invasion coming, the Chinese and all that, and the Russians and all these people coming to this land. You have no idea where you will stand. You don't know where you will be. If you don't take care, you don't take care, you cry for him and you will not see him. You will not, because he gave you time and season. He gave you chances upon chances to make things right. But you are following friends. If I'm following friends, I make sure those I'm following, they fear God. They fear God and they will take a stand. They will take a stand for Jesus. Not what somebody say. Not somebody's feeling. Not somebody this thing. But you take every matter and every issue before him. And he will speak to you directly. Your key under God is cutting things off. He's cutting some people off. He's going to cut them off. The massive debt that come in. The massive day that you go, you walk on the street and you see people just collapsing. People dying left and right. Hospitals, so many people burying so many people. Because you think Corona was severe. You are about to see what is about to take place. Prepare yourself and know your reason why you are serving him. Have you make this? Is, have you make plans that if that happened, where are you going to be? A Corona master. You say riches and money and riches and all this, they are all good. Fame is good. You say fame without God, it is nothing. Money without God, it is nothing. Career without God, it is nothing. Me preaching without God, it is nothing. Because the many can preach. Many are very eloquent. They are so good. Position and rearrange and arrange the sermon and preach it the way that do you want to say about many denying of his power, his power, his glory, his power is not in them, his presence is not with them. Many we have accepted Freemason pastors on the pulpit. We have make you, we have make it. Do you want to say we have make it normal? We have normalized it. The Freemason and all that. We have make it okay. It is okay. You key under a master. But when you take a stand to preach against you, they will fight you. They come against you. Come against your children. They will make sure. They will make sure. They will make your life miserable. They want you to give up on it. Because my people, you key under a many are blind. Some are blind. Some have ears, but they cannot hear. They see things that they cannot see. Ikoro master. Thank you, Lord. Something is going on. And it keeps saying. Something is about to take place. Watch and see those of you that are in the medical field. Watch and see a lot of, a lot of, a lot of doctors and a lot of nurses. And a lot of this thing. A lot of them will resign. Because you see like a, this thing that will come to the hospital. And you're going to realize it because God is tired. You're going to shake it. And you're going to throw it away. The debt and everything. The chaff in there. Do you understand? There's a lot of chaff. When you talk about chaff. He's talking about doctors. Satanic doctors. 
injecting people and killing them and ending the life of so some are begging to live by yet there are some that they have the rooms uh, and they have some nurses that when you go and sleep there you don't come back again because they are positioned only few that know him in the hospital go, go and see the doctors they have run it for many years they have run it the underground, the tombs and everything, where they have meeting, where president and all of them meet and choose president and choose this because the people that my people that you said because their lack of knowledge instead of them coming together, they just heal whosoever everybody follow. Choose your choose your leader, choose your president. You will see what they will do to you, just like the children of Israel. When I say I wanted to be God over them, I wanted to be their God, I wanted to be their king, I wanted to be there. They say, no, they want a king for themselves. And I told them when you have a king, what a king will do to you. You want leaders that will lead you to hell. You want leaders because you love a friend. You love the person. So whatever they will do and they will say, you believe it and you run with it. You start checking with God and know because you have no idea that I am just blowing the chaff away. I'm not only blowing in this church, I'm blowing it in all over, including the medical field, including teachers. That Koroma said, you're going to see a lot of teachers' careers will end because in the midst of the school, the children come to school. You send your child to school. But rather what they do, they're distributing witchcraft and give it to them in the school. Eating and destroying. Your child comes home and is possessed. Your child comes home, Makori Yakata, and they sleep over and all that. Those of you that love sleepovers, you have no idea what is going on. Taking your children. Let your children sleep under your own roof to protect them. Mashandara Masa. The schools, a lot is going to remember. A few months, and as I saw shooting in the school, a lot of schools will close down. A lot of schools will shut down. But God said, they will not do what I've called them. What they will not do. And you go to school to be a teacher, the career you went to school for, but you are doing something different. He said, do you know so many children, they have ended their career. Some of the students, some of the student career have ended because the teacher have monitor. And some of the students also, they've called them ADD. They call them all kinds of stuff that they are not because they have programmed them. But my people that call by my name, instead of you pick up your child and lay hands and pray and break whatever that it is, you don't know that prayer availed much. The prayer of the righteous availed much. Father, we thank you. We we'll give you the praise. Shaki and Ramasa. Thank you, Lord. And I want you to declare that no man, no human, no demon, no witch or demon will end my career. Say it. Uh, no man, no demon, no human, nobody will end my career. So whatever they have planned, Lord, I cancel and I abort it. I abort it. In the name of Jesus. I will live to fulfill the purpose of God. I will continue to do what God has called me. I want you to declare it. I will continue to do what God has called me. I am in the hands of God. In the name of Jesus. Lord, thank you. Thank you, O Lord. Let my reason to be because you are my God. Let my reason be to be because you created me. Because I know without a shadow of a doubt that I love you. Let my reason be that I genuinely love you. Not because of what what you can do for me not because of what i can get from you but rather to follow you and to know that you can do all things all things will work together all things will work together and all things are going on negatively or not negative they are working together for god's glory in my life whatever that happened in god because you permit it to happen so i give you the prayer i want somebody to take your handkerchief and just bless the name i thank you for whatever that going on i thank you for the things that are going on i don't like it i thank you whether i like it or not i bless your holy name that you have any 
end the career of the evil one as they intended to end my career you have rather ended your own career whatsoever they have planned has have gone back upon them the devil is a liar as satan could not kill joe could not oh god father i thank you that my life is in your hand i will not die but live to declare the glory of god and i thank you for restoring everything that you allow the enemy to fight and to take Thank you for restoring it in so many ways. In so many ways, oh God. I give you the praise. I give you the adoration, King of Glory. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. I want somebody just to thank him for a second. Thank him that my reason for serving you is not because of things you can do for me. I serve you because I love you. I serve you because I fear you. I serve you because you created me. I serve you approving yourself over and over. You have been there more than anything. You have been there from the beginning. You have been there. In my mother's womb, you have been there. Lord, I thank you, oh God. And I bless I pray that I will please you, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for covering me. Thank you for delivering me. Thank you for saving me from the hands of those that are mightier than me. Thank you for, oh God, I bless you. God, I praise you. God, I praise you. You are behind the scene. You are in behind the scene. You are working in a way that I have never seen. The man have never known. You are in behind the scene. Behind the scene, you are there. You you are working on my issue. You are working on my problems. You are working on everything. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, O Lord. I thank you, O Lord. I bless you, O Lord. I give you the praise. I give you the adoration. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Clap your hand for Jesus. Hallelujah. Clap your hand for Jesus. Your reason of serving him. What is your reason of serving him? What is your reason of serving him? What is your reason of serving him? I want you to think about it. My reason of serving him. I'm not serving God because of what I can get. So the devil, when he presents himself before God concerns my case, the devil will know. God will tell you, no, I know this one. He serve, she's serving me or he's serving me because he loved me. Because I have taken him through or taken her through tests of time. I've taken her through challenges. I've taken her through emptiness. I've taken her through rejection. I've taken her through and she has stood the test of time. She has continued to serve me. When you wanted her or wanted him to give up on me, she continued to serve me. Oh, we are not serving God because of anything. We are serving him because we love him. We are serving him because he's I am that I am. We are serving him because he's Elohim. We are serving him because he's our deliverer. We are serving him because he's our protector. We are serving him because he created us. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Clap your hand for Jesus. And let's prepare ourselves for our offering. <laughs>